It's now against Facebook's community standards to post the St. George's flag on their platform. Um, I'm not sad to say I don't have a Facebook um, profile anymore. Richard Inman has been banned from Facebook for many, many months now. But Facebook, or fascist book as we should call it, has now deemed it fit to ban the St. George's flag. This is what it said. This post goes against our community standards. Picture of the St. George's cross. We don't allow symbols, praise or support of dangerous individuals or organisations on Facebook. We define dangerous groups as things like terrorist activity, organised hate or violence, mass or serial murder, human, traf human trafficking, human trafficking, criminal or harmful activity. So according to Facebook, the St. George's flag is associated with all those things. Now, I don't know whether Jeremy Corbyn has suddenly got onto the, uh, the censorship team at Facebook, but something like that must have happened. But not only are Facebook banning the, um, the showing of the St. George's cross on Facebook, not only are they banning that, they're also banning people for posting a video promoting For Britain. Now, For Britain is not a fascist party. For Britain is not a violent party. For Britain is not a political party that is inciting anything. In fact, it's a very, very tolerant libertarian party that wants to stop fundamentalist lunatics from taking over our country. I think that would literally sum up what For Britain's about. It's stopping Islamic fundamentalists and Islamists politically and violently taking over our country. It's against the mass rape of our children. And it's for freedom of all kinds. But Facebook have suddenly decided it's a good idea to ban people, to completely delete their accounts. As a very, very good friend of mine who has had an account deleted. And that was the only way that my friend was able to keep in touch with her mother was through Facebook and it's gone, deleted. What do we do? I think we've got to do something about Facebook. I think as a movement, we've got to take action against Facebook. I think when we can get back up and running with demonstrations, Facebook needs to be paid a visit. We need to go and knock on Facebook's door and take cameras with us, take people with us and ask them, why they're banning people for displaying their national flag on Facebook. It's a despicable, despicable platform. And there are alternatives. There are alternatives. Many of us are now going across to a plat platform called VK. Now, VK is, is run by the Russians. I, I'm sure it's uh, run by the Russian government. But at least we have some liberty on there. At least we're not getting banned for posting our national flag. So we're now actually relying on the Russian-backed VK platform to protect our freedom of speech. How ironic is that? And that shows the sad state of affairs that the West is in. And people like Zuckerberg and his cronies that run Facebook are hugely dangerous. And Facebook needs to be taken down. Facebook needs to be taken down. Somebody needs to drag Facebook into court and sue them for billions of dollars for literally riding roughshod over people's free speech. Anybody that was associated with Tommy Robinson was deleted from Facebook months ago. And now, now, just for posting a video encouraging people to support For Britain, people are getting banned from the platform, their, their accounts deleted. And in this time of lockdown, when people can't get out and about, they can't go and see their family, the only way they've got to keep in touch with their family is through Facebook. This is an absolute despicable scandal. Absolutely despicable scandal. And something needs to be done. Um, I don't know what we can ever do about Facebook. I think Facebook, for, for most people in this movement, is a complete waste of time. It's a lost platform. But they shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. And I... Absolutely, when we can do demonstrations. There's two demonstrations I want to do.
when we're allowed to demonstrate again, when the um, this crazy lockdown is lifted, there's two demonstrations that we need to do. One is to challenge the government to release the report on the rape of the daughters of England, on the racist rape of the daughters of England, on the rape jihad. We need to demonstrate at the Home Office about that and make sure that that, that report is released. And I think we've gone far too easy on our demonstrations. And that's all I'm going to say. I think we've been far too relaxed on our, dem on our demonstrations and far too quiet. Look at what Extinction Rebellion did. But when we do a demonstration about the grooming scandal, we need to be very, very vocal and very disruptive. Not telling anyone to break the law, but we need to be extremely disruptive and extremely vocal and extremely coordinated because that, that, that report needs to be released. And we need to target Facebook. Maybe it's on the same day, maybe it's on a different day. We need to go after Facebook and demand that Facebook start respecting people's rights in the United Kingdom to freedom of expression. See, there's bound to be equality legislation they're breaking. But the reality is none of us have got the funds or the, or the time to, to take legal action against them. But somebody needs to, somebody needs to come in with money and with a good legal team and sue the backside of Facebook for what they're doing and what they're getting away with. And let's say that grooming report, that grooming report must be released. But things are going to get even worse. Things are going to get even worse. In 2006, many of us lobbied to have a piece of legislation stop dead in its tracks. And, and the, the legislation was, was basically sponsored by the Muslim Council of Britain, as far as I remember. And it was a de facto blasphemy law to stop people criticising the religion of Islam in the UK. Blair's government were going to railroad it through. And by a series of miraculous processes, that legislation was stopped. And, it, and, and the legislation was carrying up to a seven-year prison sentence for people who criticised the religion of Islam. It got stopped by one vote. My local MP changed the vote. She was going to vote for it. We lobbied her. We prayed about it. And she changed her mind. And she voted against the legislation. And it was stopped. It was a miraculous thing because Blair had a majority of about 150 it was defeated by one vote. Now, in Scotland, the Muslim Justice Secretary, and I'm being very careful what I say, because these people will drag you into court and sue you for libel and slander at, the, at, the, at a drop of a hat. But let's just say the Muslim Justice Secretary in Scotland has been railroading through legislation that will do exactly the same thing. It will ban the, critic, the criticism of Islam and it will imprison people who criticise Muslims or criticise Islam. It will imprison them for up to seven years. That's going through the Scottish Parliament right now. So not only do we need to do demonstrations in London at the Home Office, in, at Facebook. We're going to have a busy schedule when we get back to this. We need to do Facebook. We need to do the Home Office and we also need to get outside the Scottish Parliament. And we need to have a very vocal demonstration outside the Scottish Parliament to demonstrate for our freedoms. Because if Scotland gets it in by the back door, it's only a matter of time before the, the other four nations of the United Kingdom, certainly Northern Ireland and England and Wales, all act on their own it's going to come in there as well and there's going to be these de facto blasphemy laws that are going to lock people up for seven years so we need to target facebook we need to target the home office and then we need to target the the scottish assembly and we need to get thousands of people on the streets of scotland to stop this monstrous legislation go through our freedoms have been eroded and eroded and eroded at the minute we're all under house arrest our freedoms are being eroded more and more and more and it's got to stop and we've got to fight back. We've got to wake up to what's happening. And once this stupid lockdown's over, we've got to get back on the streets doing demonstrations and making our voices heard throughout this nation so that they know they can't get away with it. And I believe that we'll get mass support 
When we start taking to the streets again, we'll have tens of thousands of people on the streets supporting our demonstrations. So let's fight for freedom of speech. Let's protect freedom of speech. Let's show the Home Office. Let's show Facebook. Let's show the Scottish Assembly that they cannot ride a coach and horses through our freedoms. See you all soon.